CataractCoach.com. Pupil stretch, torque lens, steroid implant. It's a tough case, masterfully done for this monocular patient. So our guest surgeon here is Dr. Hamani Goyle from New York City. And we're looking here at a eye that has a small, sneaked down pupil. You see some torque marks made there. Two paracentesias made 180 degrees opposite each other. Now putting in some viscoelastic here. And we sped up the video, obviously. And here comes the main incision. That looks like a good tunnel length. I'll take that. And now some viscoelastic on the surface of the eye just to get better visualization. And let's see the pupil stretching and breaking of the sneaky using two, looks like, Kuglin hooks. And so going here under the iris and gently going around. That's a very slick maneuver. I like that 360. And now the di dilating of the pupil by stretching it in two different directions. And that looks great. And that's probably going to be a sufficiently large pupil to complete this case now. So remember, the patient's also getting a toric lens, so you definitely need to have the pupil sufficiently large so you can see where the toric lens marks are so you can get it lined up appropriately. And so here now, a little more viscoelastic always helps. And then time for the rexus. Let's see what we got here. Cystotome going inside and getting that flap turned over. A nice, good-sized capsule rexus. Now, I want to show you the whole video, so I'm showing you it four times normal speed. So here you got an expert surgeon, Dr. Goyle, who's taking about 20 minutes to actually do this case, right? So there are four times normal speed is about five minutes. That's great, taking your time. This is a tough case. You can see the patient also has a peripheral iridotomy. This patient's also probably on the um, hyperopic side as well, shallower AC. So nice looking Rex is done, nucleus is spinning, that looks great. And you know me, I like that the, the incisions barely nick the limbal vessels. And now let's see the phaco technique, phaco probe going inside the eye. And adjusting the sleeve there. And let's see, this. here's a chopper going in as well. And cleaning up the anterior cortex first to get a better view. So again, fixing that sleeve and let's see what we got here. So groove down the middle, looking good. And you see only a few strokes are needed to get that groove going. You don't have to do a whole lot more. And so now rotating at 180, continue that groove. And then let's see, are we gonna split the nucleus? There it is, nucleus has been split very nicely. And now a little bit of a divide and conquer technique. So another small groove and another split. And now the pieces can be removed. So taking out the first quadrant, then there comes the second quadrant, everything looks great. And then here comes the last half, which is chopped. So a combo between like a stop and chop, halfway between stop and chop and divide and conquer, I like it. So now it's time to clean up that cortex. Patient's got a lot of movement here, so perhaps in a case like this, I'd ask for a little more anesthesia. Either the anesthesiologist can give a little bit more um, systemic sedation, or you can do a retrobulbar block or a subtenons block, something of this nature. So cleaning up the cortex, nice and easy. That looks great. And then we're going to get a torque lens in the eye. And so you can see the pupil stayed pretty well dilated. So a lot of times these eyes, where they are sneaked down, you still can have a reasonable dilation after breaking that sneaky eye. And a little bit of that pupil stretching helps as well. And we've looked at this before in Cataract Coach, the amount of stretching you get and the total uh, area for the pupil afterwards, whether you use a ring or use pupil stretching, they tend to be pretty similar. So here comes the toric lens going in the capsular bag. You can see the toric marks there at the haptic optic junction and getting that rotated to the appropriate position. I also wanted to show you this case because in this case, Dr. Goyle also uses a steroid implant, dexamethasone steroid implant, and she's going to place that in the patient's eyelid inferior canaliculus. And so I'm going to show you that as well. So that steroid implant was, is temporary. It'll, it'll you know, release steroid through that canaliculus, and it'll go up through the punctum and to the ocular surface, and it should last the patient uh, for a little bit of time, maybe a, a week or two in the post-op period. So sealing up the incision, that looks pretty good. Lens is lined up where she wants it, that looks fantastic. So very nice case. And let's see what else, a little more hydration. And then checking the paracentesis as well. And I, I do like the position. Incisions look nicely sealed. And I want to show you that steroid implant. 
So yeah, in the U.S., we have a couple options for these steroid implants. You can have one that's called DexiQ that's placed behind the iris, inside the eye in the poster chamber, and then this one is Dextenza, which is placed here in the inferior canaliculus. So still using the microscope here, dilating that punctum a little bit. There you go, just to make some room. And then here comes the implant, and that's pushed in there. And again, this is in a matrix that will dissolve. And if it's still a little tight, you may have to dilate it up a little bit more. Thanks for watching, and thanks for a great case. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. Cataractcoach.com. Check it out.